Now the whole point of a demo is that there meant to be a taste of what the full game is, and whether or not people who played such demo will either be up for the full game or rather save their money and skip for it. And I've played lots of demos ever since 2018, some of which have got me excited for such full games, while others don't at all. And now we've got a new one. Hey everyone, what up? Mad Kaiser here, and here it is my thoughts and stuff on the demo of one of my most anticipated games of this year, Skull Nexus. Now, this one really, really took me by surprise when I heard that a demo was coming out. Though, to be honest, I should have seen that coming since with Bandai Namco, they've had released such demos in the past, like Tales of Berseria and Cold Vein. And this one really does a lot to talk about. But first, I want to get the elephant out of the room very quickly. As for some reason, the demo is a timed exclusive, because if, as of now, you can play the demo of Scarlet Nexus on the Xbox One and Xbox Series right now. But as for PlayStation, they will have to wait for at least um, about like two, like about like two days from now to play it. Which yes, it sucks. I can't believe they pulled a Resident Evil Village out of that, even though Resident Evil Village's demo had it worse. And yes, I know it sucks, and I definitely hope that the PlayStation players who are interested in this game try out the demo and see what they like, because oh my god. But I best not waste my time rambling about it and get to my thoughts of the demo. So a quick short summary is that I loved the demo, I absolutely loved it. So, the main interesting thing is that Scott, with Scar Nexus, some of the selling points I was into was that some of the former Tell staff were working on this game, as well as collaborating with some of the people from Code Vein and also God Eater, especially when the director of this game, Kenji Anabuki, hope I'm saying that right, is in fact a Tales veteran. Immediately when I opened the demo, it immediately gave me Tales of Exilia vibes from the character select, reminding me of Jude and Mila, with, with you choosing who character to start with and having their own detailed background and story. Now what does God Nexus have to offer in this demo? Well, of course, there is a tutorials for both Yuto and Kasane, which teach you some of the basics like normal attacks, evading and dodging camera, and also psychokinesis, which I'll get into later. But now let's go on to Yuto's side first. Now, quickly, when you open Yuto, Yuto you enter into this small city area with his companions Hanabi and Gemma as well as having also Sumugi and Luca as optional. Other things they had was the brain map which is basically the game skill tree which lets you spend brain points for BP as in short to enhance some new skills you can learn that pretty much makes your character just you know like more versatile accessible and just overall fun anyway so your main goal here is that Yuto is on his first assignment hunting down others and of course we get into the combat system now the gameplay of this for Yuto is pretty smooth and very fast considering that he is mainly meant for close quarters combat close range combat using his sword and can make very fast attacks. But it's not only just that, as you have access to his main ability known as Psychokinesis, which basically means you just throw around any objects and enemies. Cars, boxes, bins, all that 
pizzazz and all that stuff which is really cool and just really awesome as well it's very integrated well in the combat but that's not the only thing you have as with the psychokinesis bar uh, you can replenish that by using like you're doing no more attacks but also you have access to things known as SA slings which allows you to borrow special abilities from other party members for example, you can use Pyrokinesis from Hanabi, which allows you to temporarily use fire attacks, which includes using normal attacks, or just Psychokinesis in general, making attacks more fire-based and inflicting fire damage on special enemies, especially ones that have oil in the mix, while others such as Gemma's St Stereokinesis, I think that's how it's pronounced, I don't know, Let's you temporarily take no damage and harden your body as a shield. Luca has teleportation which allows you to teleport to certain areas that you can only can access to as well as using it to teleport to create surprise attacks on enemies. Sumugi's clairvoyance is also is used mainly to see through invisible enemies while also predicting their moves and once you dodge you can create a perfect counter reprisal on them. All of these are pretty much limit all of these have a limited time so it's best that you actually have to have to use them very wisely. But once you combine the SA slings, psychokinesis and the normal combat, it makes for a pretty fun and engaging battle system. Enemy designs of, of the others look grueling very messy and disgusting in a very good way like oh my god like, these are some very horrific creatures i ever seen in my life like wow so ugly and no wonder why the osf wants to suppress them but of course there's other things as you get items which basically right you find items to explore as well as find more others to kill Honestly, there's also the brain drive, which essentially, once you, which lets you go all ham on these enemies. Once you filled up enough of that brain drive from normal attacks and psychokinesis on that stuff, you basically go berserk on them, making you wear a hood and just basically changing the music and just reducing damage and also increasing your tax so long you basically go ham on them like you're basically wearing the commanders from tales of zillia 2 in a sense even though in a full game it is expected that will be expanded further upon as such there's also things to discuss on assault versions which it lent, which soon other party members will prompt you to use these where other party members can approach to come and use their own attacks to stagger an enemy for a short period of time for a short period of time so it's like a quick time team attack in a way and there's also the brain crush where where a lot of others except bosses would have a yellow bar and if you crush the ye yellow bar their brains will pop up prompting you to use a brain crush which are basically like various fiddle strikes where once you once they're open, you are able to insta kill them instantly in an awesome anime fashion. Honestly, the graphics and art style for Scar Nexus look absolutely fantastic and very well detailed. Like honestly, it's like a it's like you're playing a 3D anime. And thanks partially to Unreal Engine 4, which as I said is always a marvel. As such, you also at the end of the de uh, as such, the demo length of Scarlet Nexus is one hour in total, which both playable sides being thirty minutes to thirty minutes long in a sense. But you could expand it by exploration and just fighting more enemies and all that stuff. As such, I even enjoyed the comic style scenes. And at the end of Yuto's side, you face against a boss, which to be honest, I didn't find to be as practically easy. Like, first, it wasn't really a cakewalk, as it prompted me to use all what I learned. Like, sure, sure, some of the prompts made it an easy breeze, but still, it was an epic fight. 
and I really enjoyed the enemy design and all that stuff. Like really. And I even did some replay sessions on trying to no damage it. And also there's even some other modes you can customize, like find items that could customize your characters. And you can even, if you want, remove your party members to go on solo. And even remove SAS links entirely. For just a little bit of extra challenge. As such, that was YouTube's side as he was honestly pretty fun. But even more fun was definitely, definitely Kasane Randall. Where Yuto is meant for close range and fast fluid attacks, Kasane's level, Kasane is meant for AoE attacks and aerial combos using her magic throwing knives, I believe. As she, as, as she also goes on the first assignment, but whereas Yuto is more like a new recruit, Kasane is more advertised as an elite member and she partners with characters like Shiden, Arashi, um, Kyoka and Kagero and also, and also they provide their own SAS including stuff like Shiden's electrokinesis, Arashi's hypervelocity, Kagero's invisibility and Kyoko's duplication. And honestly, honestly, it's so much fun to experiment to, to create lots of fantastic combos with them. Like so many, so much depth is put into this combat system alone. Especially when there was a skill in Kasane's where you can even use up to two SA links at the same time, which honestly is really awesome. Now it's pretty much more. Now pretty much it's a different area and it's slightly different with the only exception being the boss is pretty much the same despite where the other one shoots oil, the other one shoots water in a sense. Other things I really liked is the music and honestly just the art style alone. However there are some things that uh, I had issues with. Now this this was coming from a playthrough that I played on my Xbox One S. As you know that the Xbox One versions of Scarlet Nexus have been locked to 30 frames per second while the series and next gen versions I'm assuming would go around 60 and above. It, now to be honest frame rate doesn't really bother me as long as it doesn't you know become like I'm playing a slideshow so I didn't notice any too noticeable frame drops. But however, there was a bit of slowdown with some of the comic style cutscenes they had. And it was indices where some of the characters would project messages, but the audio come but the audio sync was way off, so it takes a while for it to come in. Other things is that while the combat is fun, it takes a learning curve to get used to as the game throws so many mechanics at you and with so many control schemes. Now as such that you can technically customize what control layout you want but it's only limited at the meantime. Not sure if they apply for the full game but who knows. But honestly those are probably my minor gripes with the game. As such I really had a fun time with Scarlet Nexus and I really did lots of replay sessions because I just can't stop on loving it, I honestly. This became one of my most anticipated games for a reason, and I'm happy that I successfully pre ordered it. I actually even pre ordered this game before the demo came out on PC, and I knew for a second that I was really gonna love it. Scarlet Nexus, the demo has proven to be fantastic thanks to its wonderful art style and fantastic combat system. And I'm do hoping that the, uh, the full game will further explore that, with potentially stuff like ex new explorable areas, new ways to experiment the combo system, and even potentially even fleshing out the characters. So overall, I really love Scarlet Nexus, and I'm definitely looking forward to it, the full game of it, on June 25th. I do hope that when it, when it comes to PlayStation, the demo, that 
you guys get you guys at least give it a shot if you're interested because overall i think if you're a fan of action rpgs which this is this is not a souls bond game so no need to worry if you're familiar with stuff like Neo Automata or Astral Chain, then Scar Nexus would feel right at home at you, even if it's not made by Platinum. But anyway guys, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. So punch that like button, drop that comment, and click that subscribe button if you're new. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Mad Kaiser, out.